Father, the Son of all Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the long-awaited Savior, love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Dear brothers and sisters, the Advent wreath encourages us to wait in hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in glory. We continue to be watchful in prayer, active in good deeds, faithful witnesses to Jesus who's taken on human flesh to bring salvation to his people. Let us pray. Father of light and of hope, Look with love upon your people, fill them with the spirit of the Lord. They may love and serve you in your kingdom. Protect us during this week, we humbly ask. Keep us watchful in prayer as we joyfully await the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. to extinguish the darkness, to dispel the fear and foreboding of the kingdom, to help us embrace the ways of God. The formidable figure of John the Baptist heralds in the good news, bringing us to repentance, to renounce our sins and evil deeds, to help us to become instruments of the kingdom. Let us then together uh, renounce our sin, profess our, our real sense of, of God's mercy. I confess to mighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed of Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. 
he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall gaze, their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the ass and the weaned child shall put its hands on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, 
so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your uh, reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now, John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt uh, around his waist. His food was locust and, and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him in all the region along the Jordan, and they were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, John said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now their axe is lying at the root of the trees. And every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is coming more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, his winnowing fork in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think what has um, struck me about these Advent readings is the whole sharp contrast that we see. Here are the words of the prophet Isaiah, whereby we expect these beasts of burdens to devour one another. 
Have you ever seen a, a wolf and a lamb? A lion and a cub? A bear and a tiger? Have you ever seen a child play over the uh, nest of an asp? Or have you, have you seen a, a cobra playing with children in a park? On a natural level, we know that this cannot occur because they are prey, they are food for each other. It's the order of nature. So what is happening here with this beautiful vision from Isaiah, but that he's giving us a transcendent, supernatural outlook of what takes place in the kingdom. Harkening back to, of course, the Garden of Eden, where everyone walked hand in hand with God. Adam and Eve walking hand in hand with God. And all God's creatures, whom God said were good, lived in, in harmonious relationship with one another. It is a beautiful uh, revelation for us to, to consider. It's a glorious uh, image of majestic quality uh, during these Advent days because the theme is the light will scatter the darkness. Where there is sadness, there will be joy. Where there is depression and despair, there will be hope. Where there is sickness, there will be health. And where there is affliction, God will bring his comfort. Certainly the contrast is seen between the Pharisees and the formidable character of John the Baptist. We have a beautiful statue here in the sanctuary by Mother Mary at the baptismal font, which we had our baptisms uh, this past Saturday morning. Young Grayson and Aidan Conlon. Their parents, uh, together with the family members, renounced Satan, all his works and all his empty promises. That uh, baptism that John was giving was a baptism of, of repentance for their sins. And John promised that one would come whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry who will baptize you with water, fire, and the Holy Spirit. And that's the, uh, the baptism they received. Now his father said, I was surprised because little Aiden doesn't like water poured over his head. And he was cradled in his father's arms and uh, he, he didn't make a peep. <laughs> much to our, our surprise. But uh, there must have been something there, the, uh, the, um, just in a, in a, on a human level, uh, of, of uh, his father speaking about our resistance to change, our resistance to the waters of new life, our resistance to the ways of God. Everybody experiences on a natural level. Just like, for example, if you were preparing for your Christmas meals, and you say, I don't want to invite that person. I might say the wrong thing. I really don't want to go visit those people out there because we tend to devour each other. <laughs> That's the challenge of our Advent preparation. If we're called to be light bearers, and John the Baptist says to them that you cannot allow sin to reside in your heart, and to be a disciple of Christ, then we have to let the light shine where it may, and especially in our hearts and in our homes. Where we're going to be preparing, we know that these celebrations are on the horizon. We're going to be rubbing shoulders with people that we don't see very often. Some people that make, make us feel uncomfortable. Some people that kind of the hurts of the past, resentments surface, but 
that's life. And life with Christ is always going to mean that we're expanding our heart. God is creating us anew. So if you feel a bit uncomfortable, call your relative and say, um, just thinking about you, hope things are going well during Advent, looking forward to seeing you at Christmas. And I imagine that would change the atmosphere of that encounter. That would uh, ready the hospitality uh, that St. Paul talks about and the harmony of rather than devouring each other, you can be civilized. Enjoy the meal, enjoy the friendship, enjoy what it's all about. Not about us, it's about Christ. What Christ wants to do in us. Think about what John said. Uh, well, he kind of said, well, like, I, Lord, I don't think I'm worthy to baptize you. He kind of said uh, that, didn't he? But then he did. He baptized the Lord in the River Jordan. But he also pointed to Christ. His whole life was about orientating people to the divine, to the sacred, to Christ. There's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Behold, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So we see John here, kind of a strange-looking character, isn't he? With uh, camel's hair, leather, sandals, a beard. you got to watch out for the guys with the beards. <laughs> Long hair. But there's a lamb, the Agnus Dei. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the one that points to, to Christ. It's his cousin after all. And there's a lineage. But who in the Bible does John the Baptist remind you of? And I'm thinking probably some of you will think about Elijah. Elijah was preparing the people of God, the Israelites, for that great encounter of the Messiah. John is the last of the prophets who prepares us to meet Christ. We're to be Christ bearers. Now think about this. Um, we had um, a beautiful uh, preparation, of course, through the Paschal gift of preparing for Christ's birth. We know that we're preparing, obviously, for the coming of, of Christ again. Christ will become present to us, the gift of his body, blood, soul, and divinity on the altar. But think about the gospel acclamation. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. How do you then bear Christ to the other, to your neighbor, to your sister, to your brother, to your cousin, to your parents? your spouse. That's the key here for our Advent preparation. How then can this forthcoming of Advent be in a sense um, a gift that we uh, give to the Lord of ourselves? I want to bear the image of Christ in my mind, my heart, in, in my body. That's a, a wonderful gift that uh, you can uh, give to the Lord to help others see the salvation of God. I know it, it um, doesn't sound like much, um, but there's, there's a, a lot of truth to, in, instead of frowning, you can smile. Instead of cursing, you can bless. Instead of gossiping, you can share the admiration that you have for others. It sounds very insignificant, but it, it talks, it's really about the, the transformation and the sharp contrast. If you are used to using curt or foul or slanderous language, wouldn't it be different if you're at the table and somehow what you conveyed was rather uplifting, life-giving, and supportive. 
I think I also see the contrast with the Pharisees and John the Baptist. They're in the temple. They're trying to keep the law. They're trying to help, uh, sort of do their, their, their thing. But here's, here's John. He's not in the temple. He's the one that sort of, he, um, you know, with Zechariah, sort of like has that, that sort of uh, lineage. Zechariah was a priest. But he's not. He's in the wilderness. He's in the desert. He's a voice crying out, prepare the way of the Lord, make a straight path. And what do we hear him say? Repent. Get rid of your, your sins. And furthermore, what does he say to the Pharisees who are standing in front of him? You see, they're there in a pretense, almost like pretending uh, that they are somehow, perhaps they want to be seen by the others who visit the temple. They want to be seen by doing the right thing. But John see, kind of senses the quality of their heart. He says, you guys are a bunch of snakes. Uh, well, let's put it this way. You are sons of snakes. It's not a compliment. He's saying you're uh, a brood of vipers. And if I had my druthers, I would say that, that John the Baptist may have sounded a bit like John Broman. <laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> that deep, powerful voice. But what he's asking them is to have fruits of repentance. That it's not enough to do the external. It, it, the quality, it has to be seen on the internally that somehow the, the Lord, in his mysterious way, uh, as, as John prepares the people for Christ, can change their hearts. That's why it was so important uh, on Saturday morning to have a baptism. Because naturally, we can't do it. We become more like the lamb and the wolf. Left to our own devices, we will devour each other. Now, obviously, we, we think that there's a, a goodness that resides within the human heart, uh, which is much stronger and, and, and very, um, we would say, resilient. Uh, it's, it's, we, we see what we, we call the um, men of goodwill. We, we see a lot of uh, you know, fortitude that, uh, or virtue. But it, it can't exist without the supernatural motive. Christ has to be at that center of that change. And so the, the waters uh, are, are very efficacious to wash away original sin, to, to make that child configured more to Christ, to remind the family that they are a member, integral member of the parish, that uh, the mystical life, the divine life of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has been given to that child as a, as a precious gift that's indelible mark cannot be erased. We use the word uh, an ontological reality. If you're married, it's permanent. If you're a priest, there's a permanency to it. If you're baptized, confirmed, there's a permanency there uh, because you are marked by Christ. Well, and you see how the contrast is given also um, uh, by our, our Lord. Um, we, we did have this uh, soup in scripture, and we were asked to think about, is there a word, phrase, or image that really captivates you uh, with these beautiful Advent readings? And you know what mine was? Wild honey. For the life of me, I, I was thinking about that all the time. Because we know how the bees, the, there's a honey bee that is directing all the activity of the other bees. And the, the bees all have to work together to uh, bring about this, this precious uh, fruit, basically, of the hive. But it, it takes all of them working together uh, to make this uh, uh, beautiful uh, treat, this beautiful gift that is sweet to the Savior, to, to, to really to, um, we use it in, 
the sweetening our tea. We, we use it in our, our baked goods. We, we really enjoy the honey, and there's all sorts of varieties of it. But why does the scripture go into great detail about eating bugs and uh, eating wild honey? See, there's a, there's a wild flavor, if you will, by extension to John's life. He, he's a madman, madly in love with Christ. There's something wild about what he says because he, he doesn't do what is politically correct. He doesn't keep the sort of norms of the day. He doesn't sort of pretend to, to be cordial with the scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. He's actually very radical and, and wild in his discourse. He is because he knows that something's on the line. When someone else's life is on the line, you have to speak the truth. You have to shake them out of their complacency. You have to get their attention. You have to plead at them. And, and sometimes it, 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 it's a matter of when, you, when someone's got a thick skull, you can only hit them in the heart. It, it, it's a heavy blow, but he wants to get their attention. He wants them to wake up, to be alert. Uh, he wants them, like no one else, like, like there's no tomorrow, uh, to have this beautiful gift of receiving the fire, to receive the spirit. This is the wild quality about John the Baptist. But there's one thing we know about fire, it spreads. Let us pray that the grace this week will be that the fire will spread in our hearts and in our, our homes. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, a creator of heaven and earth. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, uh, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we are attentive to the Father's word to establish harmony, peace, justice, reconciliation, our response to Prayer is to be faithful, to be zealous in our good works, to pray for the mission of the church, for the needs of our families, for all those who have asked for our prayer, for the salvation of all God's people. For the spirit of repentance that leads to growth and holiness for all church members during this Advent season for prophetic voices to glorify God and proclaim the gospel by love. Come, Lord, and show us your love. We Come, Lord, and show us your love. For the sharing of our talents to make this season more festive for those in need, for hearts to open to the mercy that God offers in the sacrament of reconciliation. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and show, show us, us your, your love. love the coming of hope and peace in the lives of all people in Ukraine, Lebanon, Somalia, for the safety of refugees, the release of hostages, and comfort for the sick and suffering. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and show Lord, us your love. love. For those facing economic difficulty, 
anxiety or rejection, for sustained hope for those who work for justice and liberty. Come, Come Lord, show us, show us your love. love. For the Spirit's loving wisdom to melt the hearts of the proud and enlighten the minds of unbelievers, for reconciliation and healing in lives and communities that are divided. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and show, show us, us your, your love. love. For the physical and spiritual well-being of all parishioners, for all who have died recently, and for the intentions we bring to this Eucharist, in memory of Kay Pindus, Come, Lord, Lord and show, show us, us your love. love. Father of justice and of peace, give us, we pray, a spirit of repentance. Help us to renounce everything that is not of you, but to welcome your kingdom in our midst, to live in harmony with one another, to be to have you as our welcome guest, hospitable to your ways. Let us leave complacency behind and give us conviction. Let us leave conflict behind and help us grow in just ways. Help us to leave violence so we can give way to peace, peace Christ bestows. For he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. During the preparation of the gifts, please join in singing hymn number 312 from the Catholic Book of Worship 3, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 312.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our giving of all of the Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue, with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so the angels, archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end. We are Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rise of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Go with him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the eternal Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the loss of hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy you should enter into my roof, unless the word in my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 305 from the Catholic Book of Worship 3, Be Light for Our Eyes, number 305. Once again. 
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Solemn blessing on this Advent day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with a rich reward of life eternal when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, uh, thanks be to God. God. As you can see, we have a, a beautiful crash that is empty. And I think it's uh, awaiting some, some gifts. This crash, unlike the one at the rectory, is not awaiting any persona. That is, uh, it's not awaiting kings or Joseph or Mary or donkeys or lambs or a cow. But I think uh, gifts that need to fill it. <laughs> so please, uh, please bring your gifts. And there are also items that we are collecting for seniors as well as our Christmas dinner, there's a sign-up sheet for all sorts of uh, uh, food items, uh, deliveries, uh, all sorts of things. You'll notice that at the entrance of the church. And for those who uh, don't like to bake, make sure you get your baked goods. There's lots there with the Catholic Women's League uh, bake sale. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, be humbly pray. To thou, O Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, trust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the of souls. Amen. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 308 from the Catholic Book of Worship 3, Every Valley, number 308. <laughs> 